Welcome back to the Colorado Springs Business Podcast. My name is Andrew Hasley, and I am the host of the show. Uh, Today, we are sponsored by the Colorado Springs Business Podcast. If you'd like me to read a 15 to 30 second ad script about your business at the beginning of every episode, similar to the one you're hearing now, then we can make that happen. Reach out to cosbusinesspodcast at gmail.com. And secondly, we have a Patreon account as well, which is like a membership for the show. And uh, if you're not familiar with Patreon, it's a really awesome service that allows creators to really monetize what they do. So the membership levels, there's different there's different membership levels. All membership levels, you get bonus content. And one of that bonus content being a bonus episode at the end of every month where I review uh, what I've learned and go over all the 20 guests of that month because there's 20 guests every single month unless, you know, someone cancels or anything. But then we might even fill that spot. <laughs> but... Uh, but yeah, so uh, you can check out the Patreon at patreon.com slash COS business. And uh, thirdly, we are sponsored by Vehement Visuals. This studio space that we are recording right now is uh, through Vehement Visuals, which is the company that I run, a video pro- production company that uh, where we help businesses tell their story in a compelling way and build deeper connections with uh, their audience, I guess you could say, or or uh, clientele base or, or prospects. There's certain strategies you can use for some of the things that we do. We don't just, we're not just a videographer. We, we want to get results for, for your business. And it's a B2B uh, video production based business. We don't do wedding videos. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna introduce the guest today. Uh, today we have on Sandy Catrone. And uh, do you mind telling us uh, in a sentence or two what you do? Oh, well, I'm a mortgage broker with Nexa Mortgage. Um, our main uh, corporate office is located in Chandler, Arizona, but we are all over the country. And what I basically do is I help people get financing by doing the work for them. I shop a, probably, we have access to about 60 lenders. Um, obviously, I don't want to work with 60 lenders. That would, you know, make me insane. Yeah. But I have my niche lenders that I use. Um and I shop rates and closing fees for my borrowers and, you know, certain programs. Like when I closed, I had to do a no-income check program because of my income. Um, so we have like a, a variety of different um, products that we offer um, to our borrowers to okay. get mortgages for homes. Sweet. Well, I can't wait to get into that in this episode. <laughs> and I'm going to roll the intro music. Okay. This is a show where we have real conversations with entrepreneurs and business owners who are mostly in Colorado Springs doing things in the community of Colorado Springs. I forgot to tell you before the episode started, we have free complimentary oil changes for all of our guests. I just got an oil change. Oh, well, <laughs> well uh, this lasts until uh, the 31st. Uh, one of our guests who was on the show earlier this week, he brought that in for anyone who comes on the show. And I was oh. like, now the Colorado Springs Business Podcast gives out oil changes. That's fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Just wanted to, I'd seen that and I was like, I wanted to, wanted to plug that in the episode too, awesome. I guess. <laughs> no, that's very nice. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. So Sandy, uh, Tell us a little bit, uh, uh, I guess you just told us, uh, gave us a rundown about your business. Mm -hmm. Uh, Kind of, I guess we could start off with how you got started in that. Oh, my. (laughs) (laughs) Well, um, about 35 years ago, um, I graduated from college uh, with a degree in broadcast communications. And um, while I was waiting for my dream job, I needed to work and pay the bills. And I became a processor for a mortgage, a small mortgage broker, a local mortgage broker. And um, I really loved it. Um, of course, back in the 80s when I started, um, it was kind of like the wild, wild west. We didn't need to be licensed. You kind of made it up as you went along. Okay. <laughs> um, which is probably what got us into a lot of trouble down the road later yes. on. In so the you've years. been in this industry for a long time. Yeah. Um, I got into this industry in 1984. Or 1986, yeah. Okay. So a long time ago, um, back when um, we didn't have computers. No, but you had crazy hair. We we had huge <laughs> crazy hair, um, big shoulder pads, but no, yes. com- we had no computers. We had um, no credit scores. Uh, we had really, yeah, no, there was no such thing as a credit score back then. Whoa. Um, everything was done manually, so you had the human touch back then. Um, which caused problems and, and also um, 
to me, was a more personal way of, of working. But, um, yeah, we always joke it's like we had to have a handwritten application and then a typed application and, um, you know, but, yeah, if you needed a credit report, you kind of faxed over a request and you waited uh, generally 72 hours for them to fax over a credit report. But back then, yeah, there were no credit scores. What was the credit report? So you guys determined the credit well, report, Well, it was basically. determined based on the underwriter. Like, so mm-hmm. if you got somebody's credit report and said that they were bankrupt last year, yeah, we're not going to, we weren't going to do your mortgage. No. <laughs> but we didn't base it on mm-hmm. a credit score. There was no automated underwriting. Mm-hmm. Everything was very, um, it was very personable back then. But it was, you were open to a lot of errors. Mm. Do you like the changes that. with the credit scores? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't because um, we have no control in our industry. Mm-hmm. Um, we will run somebody's credit and then we will be berated for their credit score as if we running their credit had caused a problem with their credit score. Um, the way that they score things uh, is, in my opinion, not quite fair. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've seen people that have perfect credit, but because they've maxed out their credit s- cards, mm. They That's one lo- of the big things. Yeah, they too. have low credit scores, but yet they've never made a late payment. Uh, and so that credit score might, instead of being 700 for being paid on time perfectly, mm-hmm. maybe more like 620, mm-hmm. and they get pe- they get punished for that. And then I've seen people that have had bankruptcies, and a year later their credit score is, is higher than some people that have maxed out the credit. Mm. So I don't really think that the scoring system is – It's not is, perfect. Is perfect. Yeah. It, it's really it, – it's subject. Mm-hmm. It's subject. What's that know? mean? Well, in other, it's subject to what the creditors mm-hmm. decide to report. For sure. So it's never really completely accurate, and so it can be upsetting to people. Yeah. So well, you know. like, I paid off a loan uh, a few months ago, and they still haven't reported it. So, so it's and, like, <laughs> and that's the thing. It's like people don't understand with credit. Um, they think if they pay off a collection account, it's going to increase their credit scores, and that's actually not true. Mm. Especially if it's a medical collection, you pay off a medical collection, it may do nothing for your credit mm-hmm. score. Um, what it so may you're saying don't pay off medical? Just well, kidding. no, actually, I am saying okay. that um, if you're going for a mortgage and you have a four hundred dollar medical collection, no, I wouldn't pay it off because in the industry, if it's under two thousand dollars, generally we won't ask you to pay it off because mm-hmm. um, we're human too, and we've had medical collections sure. put against us. Um, Unfairly. You guys don't look at that as an indicator that you don't deserve a, a mortgage. Right, exactly. Now, if you foreclosed on a house or had a bankruptcy, yes. yeah, we're going to look at that <laughs> like, yeah, um, it's too soon for mm-hmm. us to take another risk with you. Um, you just, you know, went into foreclosure last year. But, yeah, so we don't report to the credit companies. We just, uh, the creditors report to mm-hmm. them. And then we pull, a, you know, a credit report and we look at the three scores that you're getting from the major repositories, TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian. Mm-hmm. And we're basing um, your credit, your interest rate, based on that credit score. Mm-hmm. So, you know, there's a lot that goes into it. So for me, shopping people who have these credit issues, I have lenders that I can work with that will work with them. Now, the coronavirus has kind of introduced some other you know, issues Mm -hmm. right now with what we call bank overlays or additional guidelines to protect the lenders Mm -hmm. from, you know, foreclosures in the future and having another mortgage meltdown. So how has that been with, with COVID? Has there Um, been more more mortgages or less? Well, so we have a big refinance boom going on. Yes. Um, It has definitely affected the industry in that um, the documentation that we used to be able to accept that would, you know, we could take 90 days old or in some cases even, you know, longer, 120 days. Now um, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac and FHA and the VA, they're looking for those documents not to be more than 60 days old. So what we're finding is a lot of delays in the industry mm-hmm. um, because of the the amount of people that are trying to refinance to get lower interest rates and take advantage of it, it's kind of backing everything up. So if you are refinancing, do not be shocked if it takes over two months Mm -hmm. before you can close. And do not be shocked if your loan officer keeps coming back and saying, okay, I need another pay stub. Because 
um, what they're concerned about is people losing their job after they get the mortgage, mm-hmm. you know, and yes, and that it's so uncertain, so right, much uncertainty. Because right times now. are uncertain. Mm-hmm. So yes, we have, we are very busy. Um, Colorado Springs, where we live, mm-hmm. uh, very hot market. Houses get listed on yes, let's say is. a Saturday, and they're gone by that. It's one of the hottest Monday. markets, yes, right? It is. Yeah. It is. But with that being said, there are still delays going on because we have to verify and re-verify mm-hmm. that our borrowers are still working. You know, so there are a lot of overlays that are causing delays mm-hmm. in the industry. So I've uh, haven't had the need uh, for a mortgage mm-hmm. uh, loan officer. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what would someone? I had the question in my head, but then I, I lost it. <laughs> How to word it? I mean, uh, basically, like, uh, why would someone need your service? Okay, so it, it's very easy um, for me. Um, I am with you always. Mm-hmm. So I'm like your concierge after you close. So if you have escrow issues or you have questions afterwards, you can still mm-hmm. call me. If you went online and you did your own mortgage, you have no idea what's going on. Mm-hmm. Okay. You have nobody that you're speaking to. You submit all this paperwork. You'll get an email back that says, okay, we need more paperwork. But your point of contact is 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 going to go from one person to another. You're not going to have consistency. Mm-hmm. So unless you really understand the industry. You can get taken advantage of. You can, oh, so <laughs> taken advantage of. So taken advantage it's like, of. It's like a fresh bait, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's it. And so what we're here for is what, what we do is like I really do the job of a lot of different people. I'm an accountant. I'm an attorney. I'm okay. like a financial <laughs> advisor. I help fix credit. Yeah, I mean. We we can we are here to give you our expert mm-hmm. advice. So if I ran your credit and I said to you, okay, you have a 600 FICO score. If we can get you up 20 points, we can get mm. you into this program. So let's do that. Is, <laughs> let's do that. Let's get you up 20 points. Mm-hmm. This is how you're going to get up 20 points. And we go through it. Now, sometimes mm. credit is beyond anything that I can help people with. And then I would refer them to the experts. Mm-hmm. But if it's something simple, like if you pay off pay down this credit mm-hmm. card to 30% of your balance, we can get your credit score up yes. 20, 30, 40 points. Now, all of a sudden, all these new products open mm-hmm. up, your interest rate improves. If you do that online, you're just going to get, oh, I'm sorry, we can't help you. Your credit score is 600. Sorry, bye-bye. Mm-hmm. And there's not going to be anybody there to advise you as to how to prepare and get ready to purchase that home. Mm-hmm. So I feel that, um, we bring a lot of value to the industry because, and especially me, because I'm, you know, I'm kind of a dinosaur in the business. But 35 years of I have seen it literally yeah. seriously. I I have seen it all. Mm-hmm. Although sometimes I still get I still get surprised. I'd like to hear one of those stories. <laughs> um, oh my gosh, um, conditions of houses. Uh, I had a friend that was looking at a foreclosure and foreclosures can be a little bit tricky to do Mm -hmm. financing on. A lot of times you need a rehabilitation loan. And so we went in, she asked me to come with her to look look at this house. And um, this was back on Long Island where I'm from. And so it was like the nice, it was the worst house in the nicest neighborhood. And we walk in and they had completely removed the kitchen. Like they took the cabinets, the appliances. I mean, they took all the copper plumbing out. Oh. But they had painted this one bedroom, the ceiling, the walls, all black, mm-hmm. all black. And they had removed the floor. Okay. Completely. <laughs> so when we opened the door, she went to take a step in the room. Had she gone, had I not pulled her back, she would have gone about eight feet down into the basement. Holy. So, you know, I mean, it's like the, what people get really mad when you foreclose on them. It's like, forget it. It's like mm-hmm. th- they will just destroy that Put, house. I've, I've heard of stories of people putting stuff in the vents. You oh, know, yeah. Just to make it stink yeah, and, they'll take all the copper plumbing out of the yeah. house. Or, or another one is um, it was a new construction. And we would, went to do the final walkthrough. And <laughs> the house had been robbed of all the copper plumbing. Mm. That somebody had actually broken into the house and taken, they, they want that copper. Yeah. So now they use a lot of PVC. Now mm-hmm. today they don't really. I don't and a lot of recycling companies, uh, yeah. they'll they they have like regulations on that as well. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. where are you getting all this copper from, buddy? Yeah. <laughs> I did another house um, on Long Island that was it was crazy. There was no kitchen. 
it was like a, a butler kitchen. So like he had vending machines in there okay. and, <laughs> and like it, it was crazy. And he had a bowling alley in the basement. Nice. <laughs> so he was, he was a professional uh, bowler. Okay. But there was like really no real kitchen to speak of. It was more like just a bar mm -hmm. with like vending machines. And we were like looking at this going, yeah, he needs a stove. Yeah. <laughs> we, we need to somehow create a kitchen for this man. I don't know who takes a kitchen out on purpose, but it was a big mansion. It was like, I think at the time it was like 1.2 million. Oh, wow. <laughs> and there was no kitchen. Yeah. He just <laughs> turned it into like a bar. And where is this? Uh, that was um, that was on Long Island um, on the North Shore in, mm -hmm. in a, the Great Neck area. So, so was, what about uh, Dumbo? Uh, th like what was, have you heard of that? No. Like, what is Dumbo? I only know that him as an elephant. Yeah, me too. But recently, uh, I guess it's an area in New York, uh, like the Dumbo area. I don't know. <laughs> is that in Manhattan or I'm, I have Long no Island? Idea. New York's a big it's state. It's all the same to me because yeah. I'm from like somewhere so else. <laughs> I've been here now two years, so I, the only Dumbo I know is the elephant. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> not familiar with that. Well, at I, all. I heard like it was like really like uh, like everything was like super cheap about like. I don't know, like 20, 30 years ago. And then like now it's like booming, like like just changed. And I, I just well, wanted to bring that up because I think it's interesting how that can happen. New York, New York is an interesting area because people- It's like millions of dollars. Right, when people are like, oh my God, you're from New York City. And it's like, no, I'm from the state of New York. Okay. I'm not from New York City. So uh, Long so, Island's far away from New York City? No, it's not. Okay. But we, what- we want separation. We're not uh, yeah. Manhattanites. <laughs> We're Long Islanders. Colorado Springs is not Denver. Correct. <laughs> like, you wouldn't say you're from Denver if you were from Colorado Yeah, it's Springs. an hour drive. <laughs> right. So Manhattan is about an eight-mile island. Okay. Um, they have interesting things. Like, they sell air rights. Like, you can finance air rights because there is mm -hmm. no – you can't expand out. So if you got a little mom-and-pop shop – and it's between two like skyscrapers and you know they're like maybe three or four you stories can sell up. they can actually sell the air rights oh. in Manhattan so there's interesting things like that that mm -hmm. piece and of course they're all about co-ops and condos which you guys don't have a big familiarity with co-ops here mm -hmm. but i suspect with all the apartment complexes going on yeah they're building i that i predict code. that in about 15 years you're going to see Colorado Springs these apartment complexes mm -hmm. go co-op and sell their apartments because okay. that's kind of like what happened on Long Island. So okay. it's a little bit, you know, behind the times as far as because yeah. you were this was all a rural area. And it's still a pretty small town compared mm -hmm. uh, uh, comparatively. Right. But it's still I, a huge town, too, it, at the same time. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, the, the word city, Colorado Springs, the city of kind of doesn't resonate to me as a city because, you know, Manhattan is yeah. the city or <laughs> Denver is a city, whereas this would be equivalent to like. Hempstead on Long Island or another town okay. on Long Island that, mm -hmm. you know, so it's, it's a little bit different. I love it. Yeah. Cause it's kind of, it fits, mm -hmm. you know, but yeah, my girlfriend came, she lives in Manhattan. She came out here and she said, this isn't a city. And I'm like, well, <laughs> if you want Broadway plays and you want museums, like, you know, what we have in Man, no, mm -hmm. it's not, but then go to, uh, you know, let me introduce you to Denver. Yeah. You know. Yeah, Denver's huge. Yeah. Right, Denver's <laughs> huge. That's, yeah. a, you know, so it's mm -hmm. all in perspective. For sure. And I'm from Kansas City, uh, Kansas City, Missouri. Mm -hmm. And it's, the downtown is like twice as big as this, mm -hmm. but it's like four, five times as small as Denver. So it's like, right. It's, it's right in the middle Right in this. the middle. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's weird because uh, the, the suburb I'm from, from in Kansas City, mm -hmm. is like, Colorado Springs is in the middle between Kansas City and the suburb that I'm from. Mm -hmm. Like, it's still, it's like, right, it's like, it's it's hard to explain, I guess, but. Yeah, yeah. so, I mean, and for me, too, because people are like, oh, you're in a city. We never thought you would live in a city. And I'm like, um, not so much. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it, it's smaller. Like, my brother lives upstate New York. Mm -hmm. So, and upstate New York, just to clarify, has mountains. We have the Allegheny Mountains and yeah. the Adirondacks and the Catskills, and it's gorgeous with mm -hmm. lakes and Lake Ontario and Lake Erie and Canandaigua Lake. So yes. he lives up in Rochester, New York, and that is a big city. Okay. I would say Rochester is probably as big as Denver. Okay. But it's in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah, like Buffalo, New York, too. It's yeah. like a big city, but it, it's rural. It's uh, it's it's weird. Yeah, because the, the population in Denver is like around 6 million, I think. Oh my goodness! Wow. Yeah. Well, That's if you huge. if you if you include the suburbs, which right. are intricately connected to mm -hmm. it, which count I think, mm -hmm. and 
I think it's around. I might be wrong. It might be. It might be more around five. But I know Kansas City with its metropolitans is around two million people, and that throws a lot of people off. Wow. Like they don't expect like that to be that big. Yeah. <laughs> so like Manhattan, last time I heard, I think was eight million. Okay. Um, but it's hard to. It, it's really. I, Most people are coming out from everywhere. They're driving there. Right. And, so like there was people like um, I lived in a a small town called Babylon mm-hmm. um, on Long Island, and it was like kind of like the last electric stop on the train. So it was the hub of if you were going to Manhattan, you got onto the train in Babylon. You were in Manhattan and Penn Station in an hour, hour and ten minutes to an hour and twenty minutes. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, and and a lot of people did that commute every mm-hmm. single day. Yeah. So that when we had nine eleven, mm-hmm. um, we were also affected. We could see the towers from Long Island, um, from my house. Oh yeah. We could see the smoke. Mm-hmm. Um, we lost a lot of people. Mm. Um, in the suburbs. Yes. That were firefighters or that worked on Wall Street and down, you know, so. We were severely affected for sure um, during nine eleven. Whereas they, especially even, like living there, like mm-hmm. well, with, they with, shut down the bridges, yeah. so we couldn't leave the island. We couldn't take the ferries over to Connecticut like we used to. Like everything for uh, it, it felt like forever, but it was probably like maybe ten days where mm-hmm. there was no airplanes in the air except for like here. You're kind of used to it because mm-hmm. it's military, so you look up in the sky. And it doesn't surprise you to see a military plane. Mm -hmm. We see so many planes out here. (laughs) So many planes out here. But there, we weren't used to that. Mm -hmm. You look up in the sky, you see, you know, a 727 or whatever, Mm -hmm. you know, a a commuter plane. So we were shut down. Couldn't go through the tunnels. Couldn't go over the bridges. Security was just, you know, crazy. So it was kind of like isolation on the island Mm -hmm. it was it was weird it's it's interesting how like big events like that Mm -hmm. i was in like uh it's gonna make me sound really young yeah (laughs) you look really young though (laughs) i was i was in like third third grade yeah my kids were okay my son was in fourth grade and my younger one was i think kindergarten or first grade but it's so cool how you you can like remember exactly where you were if you ask anyone they really kind of have a memory of it i know exactly what i was (laughs) doing i know exactly everything like that day of everything is just implanted in my head and because we we lived in a community where we lost about 40 kid 40 people in our community my kids went mm. to school with kids who were orphaned um from yeah. that day like it it was crazy it was and not knowing what's going on especially, and not, right. especially with no social media it's like are we well everything was shut or? down <laughs> it's, you know it's like the cell phones are shut mm-hmm. everything like you know wires in the mortgage industry got shut down so it didn't oh. just shut down us I, I heard but it was like wires. Yeah, yeah, wires go through Wall Street, mm-hmm. so the whole country was affected. Yeah, even if you weren't affected directly, you were affected mm-hmm. by everything because of the shutdown and everything that went on in Manhattan. I really felt like they really came back quickly. They really did, considering yeah. the devastation of everything. This country was up and running in a couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. so it and was, I, I heard I, I I was too young to notice, but mm-hmm. I heard that there was like an economic crisis because of it. Oh yeah, of yeah. course. Well, we're going to have an economic crisis because of the coronavirus. Yes, which is why the banking industry has implemented all these overlays and additional guidelines mm-hmm. because we're we are now starting to see the actual effect mm. of businesses that had to temporarily close down now they're opened up at 50 percent capacity layoffs are starting so today unemployment actually went down yeah um but unemployment was ridiculous when this hit yes and so you don't have real numbers yet mm-hmm. now that unemployment is coming down now we're going to see the real numbers come up and what businesses actually can survive this Mm -hmm. and keep their employees on and what businesses are going to end up being closed down Mm -hmm. or have to do layoffs. And so, you know, we keep in the, in the financial spectrum, we have to keep an eye on this, especially Mm -hmm. in the banking industry. We have to do responsible lending for sure. So, yeah. Uh, Do you find a lot of your lenders, uh, not lenders, I think lenders, lenders. uh, Mm -hmm. not, not just your lenders, but the, the people who are, uh, getting, uh, the, the loans. Mm-hmm. 
are those typically like families or, or do you do you do you do fix and flips? No, or do you so s- loans or so in Colorado Springs, you, we ha- we have a big VA population, obviously. Mm-hmm. So we do a lot of VA loans here. So we see a turnover, which are veteran loans, right? right? Veteran loans. Mm-hmm. So we see a large amount of um, military buying and using their VA benefits because you don't have to be a veteran. You're if you're enlisted in the military, those VA benefits okay. to purchase a home. For the one hundred percent of you know financing are available. Do you to think anybody. that plays a big role in the the booming real estate market? Well, here? I do think yes. I do think the military absolutely and the colleges mm-hmm. and all of that definitely plays a big role. Especially here. when bringing people here, people mm-hmm. will come here for a little bit and because, then fall in right, love. Right, and they <laughs> fall in love with Colorado. My my cousin um, was here. He served in the um, Air Force. Okay, and so he was here for a long time and. The wanted- Air Force Academy just checked out my LinkedIn earlier. Did they really? I just wanted to say that because <laughs> it tells me who viewed my profile. Oh, okay. <laughs> my bad. So, I mean, when he found out I was moving to Colorado Springs, he was like, it has always been my dream to go back there ever since I was in the military and I never got the opportunity to go back. But we do see that a lot of people yeah. start out here. They end up in Germany or they go here or there, Texas, what have you. And when, then they retire and they want to come back to Colorado. So what I see is mm-hmm. a lot of enlisted people buying homes here. And then let's say they get deployed or they get transferred to another state state, they don't let go of those homes. Nope. They just get a property manager, rent those homes mm-hmm. out, serve their the remaining two years, three years, wherever they have to, and they know they have a home to come back mm-hmm. to here. Exactly. So I do think the military plays a huge role. There's something comforting about the, the mountains too, for me at least. And I yeah. <laughs> it, it is. It is. I mean, I'm from Long Island, so we had the ocean, we had the bay, but if I wanted to see the ocean or bay, I wasn't wealthy enough to live on it. Yes. So I had to get in my car and physically drive there. You know, it's funny. I just, I'm so, be- I feel like I was like, missed like a huge, like, I don't know, but I just found out about the Hamptons recently. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, okay, there's, there's a beach in New York. I didn't know that. <laughs> uh, uh, we have some of the most beautiful beaches yeah. in the world. Mm-hmm. Untouched, unhoteled. We don't, it's, our beaches are pristine. Nice. Um, and after Hurricane Sandy, they were really pristine. Like that hurricane came <laughs> in with 40-foot tidal waves, and dug up all the beaches. And at one point, it, so much of the ocean sand on the bottom of the floor had come up and deposited onto our white beaches that our beaches were actually purple nice. with minerals and, and, and things from the bottom of it the floor. It made it more sandy. It, it, yeah, it did. <laughs> it did. Um, but Long, Long Island has the best-kept secret beaches. Okay. People do not know how beautiful and our beaches it's are. It's crazy, like best kept circuit because there's so many people there. And yeah. how did I not know about that? I like, have been <laughs> I have been to Bermuda and Hawaii okay. and Florida and um, the Bahamas and Mexico. And every time I'm on a beach there, I'm like, they got nothing. Yeah. Hawaii <laughs> maybe. Hawaii, okay. Hawaii maybe. Um, but really, I mean, we have gorgeous beaches on Long Island. Mm-hmm. And they don't build hotels on them. We have Fire Island, which has little towns Mm -hmm. that you cannot have a car on. So you have a bicycle, and it's a completely different lifestyle. It's crazy. And so, yeah, so that's why when people are like, oh, you're from Manhattan, it's like, not so much. Yeah. <laughs> not so much. I couldn't. So I, this girl could not survive living in Manhattan. Yeah. <laughs> I need space. I need beach. I need, you know, I've always wanted six mm-hmm. foot distancing around me. I so. feel you. Yeah. <laughs> no, for sure. Yeah. I'm actually, I'm, I'm, the lines at the gas station are so, there's nobody people like crowding you because, mm-hmm. you know, there's six feet, dis- like you yeah, have to. Yeah. So that was a plus for me at least because right. some people like would before like just be right over you and just like, dude, you're hella close to me oh, right now. <laughs> God, I would go into Manhattan for work. I used to have to go in a couple times a month and I hated it. And I would take the Long Island Railroad in and uh, get into Penn Station. And I always, I didn't like touching anything in mm-hmm. Penn Station. So <laughs> I would always wear gloves because I didn't want to touch anything it's so gross i'm sure Um, i know what penn station looks like i don't know so penn station is basically you you take the long island railroad in and then you eventually are underground okay like the subway i feel like i've I've recognized the name Mm -hmm. just because it's probably so popular so you have yeah so you have grand central which is beautiful it's a beautiful Mm -hmm. station um and that's where the trains go out of and you have penn station and that's where like amtrak you can take you know all over the country but that's the hub for all of the the commuting Mm -hmm. because people commute 
by train. Yes. Nobody's driving into Manhattan by their car, not unless they're insane. I, I hate driving in Denver. Well, <laughs> I don't need, but I don't even like walking in Manhattan because of the people gridlock. Oh, I'm not like, even talking about car gridlock. Your sardines. I, I am like, when I'm in Manhattan and I have to drive in Manhattan completely aggressive, like I am a cab driver. Yeah. Like you have to be <laughs> aggressive. But when you're walking and you're like stopped in a crowd of people, mm. it's... It's like unsettling. Yeah, like I don't even like that about concerts, you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I re hit this button again, real quick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was um, that was the interesting thing for me mm -hmm. when I moved here. How long have you been here? Was... I've been here two, a little over two years now. Okay. So we're talking completely different geography. Mm -hmm. All right, we're talking Long Island, sandy water every you know we have aquifers and we don't have water issues and like my water bill was eighty dollars a year a uh, year a year okay. a year <laughs> on long island here it's like eighty dollars a month oh wow you know but my property taxes back east were fifteen thousand dollars a year mm. here my property taxes are a thousand dollars a year so it's like is, is it's, rent about the same or no rent is like like Forget it. Rent on Long Island and forget <laughs> it. Um, my brother actually just rented a three-bedroom house on Long Island, and I thought it was reasonable at twenty four hundred for a three-bedroom house. Yeah, <laughs> um, and that is really reasonable. Um, but yeah, in Manhattan, sure. if you wanted to rent a three-bedroom apartment in Manhattan, depending upon whether what area it was in, you're looking anywhere is between four and seven thousand dollars a month. Mm -hmm. And you have no real estate around you. It's just an apartment, wow. and and you walk outside, and your kids literally play in the street. At least on you know yeah. out in the suburbs, we have you know we had a lot of property. My house back east was on the woods and a mile drive to the beach, and you know so it was it's much different for sure. But now, um, the average priced house when I left probably over four hundred thousand, four twenty, mm. with property taxes usually between. Thirteen and fifteen thousand. Okay. <coughs> so, excuse me. So, the purchase prices here are not significantly less. Mm -hmm. um, even your rents here are getting a little high. Yeah, they are raising. They, they yes. are getting a little high, but not quite as bad as New York. Okay. But you don't. You know, they shouldn't be mm -hmm. because you don't have the property taxes. And here. COVID may change that. I, people are moving away from bigger cities. Mm -hmm. I, and from from what I'm seeing and. Well, I think there's yeah. a trend for that. There's yeah. a lot of people that have exited, from mm -hmm. what I understand, Manhattan, but I don't know if it's a temporary exit. Mm -hmm. Well, I know a lot of people are leaving L.A. too, a lot of mm -hmm. celebrities, because a lot of people go to L.A. because they have access to all the, the clubs, they have access right. to all the, the networking there, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. and then that's like got shut down, so right. it's like, so why, why am I anything? in L.A.? Yeah. Why are we commuting on right, exactly. the, the horrible traffic that you got to do? <laughs> oh, God, the L.A. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I actually, when I was in L.A. Uh, on vacation, I went on the highway uh, on purpose during rush hour just, just to see huh? just to experience yeah. it and it was the only time in my life that i was happy that i was in rush hour <laughs> wow <Yeah>. um <laughs> oh if you go to long island check out the long island railroad or long island expressway okay that's like a, a very large parking lot okay but i will tell you that the first time and the last time i was on the la freeway i, I would oh my god that was awful mm -hmm. it was awful it it does yeah i don't i don't i we we got to figure out how to fix that. <laughs> that's a that's an issue that we have in, as a society. I don't know bicycles, hover cars. I think I, don't know. <laughs> I think Elon Musk is working on some some ideas for that with uh with with the uh, tunnels mm -hmm. and not only just the hyperloop because that could get you like to Manhattan like in about, like ten minutes probably. Yeah. But but yeah. also like with with the self driving cars, he's he, he's wanting to create tunnels for those where they'll you know just. And they, they can know exactly where all the other cars are at, too. So it's like they can go faster without being cause, – causing uh, – and they can be safer and faster at the same time because they're aware – the cars are aware of each other. So they can be programmed to go – like, I don't know. It's, Until something <laughs> is terribly wrong with the program. Well, that, there's that problem. But then just imagine how many car wrecks there are here. It's like – Well, that's true. So – I mean, that's, that is a true story. So, <laughs> so it's like we've got to figure out which one's better. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, we're constantly evolving – as a, mm -hmm. as a as humanity as people as a society right and yeah <laughs> well i mean you know the, our infrastructure in general though is pretty antiquated in mm -hmm. in the united states 
So he's got a big job ahead of him if he wants to do that. That's, yes. <laughs> that's a lot of jobs for people, though. Yeah, there for you sure. Go. Jobs just just create. imagine when they created the highway systems. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. that was a huge innovation right yeah. there. It's like, wow, now we're connected to other cities mm-hmm. like <laughs> with cars. It's like. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. So it's just it's just advancement. <laughs> Yeah. And a lot of those highways, they've actually created uh, an infrastructure for, for Hyperloops because they've already ter- bl- blown out the terrain for that. Right. So, well, what they introduced that they got from L.A. back in New York on Long Island was the HOV. What's that? So that's like a lane that you can only drive in if you have a hybrid car. Okay. Or if you're carpooling. Yes. So yeah, LA. I seen that the LA so had that. Yeah, we we I believe we adopted that from LA. Okay. Um, I don't really see that it made a huge difference. Mm-hmm. Um, because Long Island reminds me a lot of Colorado Springs, where people started coming out to the island. Um, and at first it was like a second hu- a home kind of community, like people, mm-hmm. you know, weekend houses, and then. So the roads were never. Um, the infrastructure was never designed for a lot of traffic. Mm-hmm. Um, and then people started coming, more and more people started living there. And, you know, it's kind of Colorado Springs kind of reminds me, you, you know, we, we I wish they would build it and then they come, but they come and then they build it. Yes, and that so, makes, yeah, Colorado Springs is faced, right. having a lot of problems with, you know, over right. flooding of traffic now, right? A- absolutely, because the people are coming before they're ready for them. Mm-hmm. And, you know, quite frankly, I got into my first car accident two weeks in here because I could not figure out oh, wow. how to get to a store because there was no entrance uh, to the store yes. off of Academy. Yes. But I saw where I needed to be but didn't know how to get there. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, where the hell is Your brain's the doing too like, many things. Right. Yeah. And it's like, well, how do I? Okay. And I saw, I'm like, oh, okay, there's a side street. I can make a right-hand turn on the side street and then I can... I can get to the store that way Mm -hmm. and not realizing that the guy on, you know, on the other side of Academy had apparently a left hand turn signal Mm -hmm. that I couldn't see. I stopped. I made a right. He apparently had the green left hand turn signal and it was the accident was my fault. Mm. Even though he hit me, it was my fault because he had the right of way. Mm. So it's all, you know, so like just even learning the roadways here and getting used to them, like, when people come to visit and they're like, well, just let me borrow your car. I'm like, no. Yeah, no, no for sure. No. And it's weird, those subtleties, like even coming from Kansas mm-hmm. City, uh, the, there's certain subtleties in the roads, but mm-hmm. also the, the subtleties in the the mind, the collective mindset of how people drive. There's certain small different things that you notice when you come to a, a new Absolutely. place. Absolutely. <laughs> like I come from an area where we're aggressive drivers. I'm not yes. going to kid you. We do not have one mile to get on. Or off an exit. Okay. That's new Which for me too. I Kansas love City's that. I'm sorry. I, I love that. Was that. A good and, idea. Yes. And it really drives me crazy. It's like you have a mile. Why did you just cut in front of me doing 40 miles an hour when you have that whole stretch to speed up to merge yeah. on mm-hmm. to 25? But we didn't have that. Literally, like, and it ain't a mile, but it's long. Though. We had yeah. like we had like 500 feet. Yeah. To enter. Same here in like, Kansas City. Traffic. Same way. Yeah. That was it. And 500 feet was generous. It's either you. It's either you. You. It's. It's. There's like a meme I seen. It's like. Either you're letting me over or we're wrecking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah. I'm, and so you become this really aggressive driver, yes. really aggressive. And then you come out here, and and I and my my theory is that there's so many people from so many different parts of the country That's here what I was thinking driving too. because you have the military. So everybody has learned to drive. You know, one person might have learned to drive on a dirt road because they're from a rural area, mm-hmm. and then you put them here. You know, and then I'm sorry, Fillmore. Who designed that entrance onto 25? <laughs> like, I avoid that. Like, I said, I think I'll get you, him on the show. I think you need to be drunk to figure out how to get onto this. That's funny. <laughs> it's like, you can't do this sober. Yeah. So I just avoid it completely because it makes no sense to me. I'm like, this yes. is, who designed this? I want to sure. smell, were you, were you testing the marijuana supply here? Yeah. You know, that's really how I felt when I saw that. I was like, this makes no sense. This, and you see, one accident after another. Mm-hmm. So even though they're improving the infrastructure to welcome all the people that are coming from all over the country, it takes time. It takes time. Mm-hmm. You know, so what Elon Musk wants to do, that's lovely. Mm-hmm. It's going to take, he, he's well, he's be, still got to make the innovations. He, yeah. yeah, he's still got to. He'll be innov- dead by the time it's implemented. <laughs> Maybe I don't know. He's he's done some crazy things. <laughs> well, that's true. And he's good at. Uh, he might freeze himself and then come back to finish the job well, later. He's good at. Uh, <laughs> Finding the right people to do things and, right. and really uh, delegating things and mm-hmm. and putting having the idea and being the overseer the uh, 
CEO, the entrepreneur, right, right. <laughs> and you know, really yeah. getting the right people in place. And so right. I think he has some really good engineers in on that. But he's also doing so many other things. It's mm -hmm. like, holy cow, well, this guy's trying to change everything. I mean, <laughs> well, I mean, th a lot of things need to be changed. With there the needs to be more people doing that. So, like, <laughs> you know, Colorado to me is a relatively newer state. Mm -hmm. Okay, so back, you know. When you live on the coastal states, they're going to be older because obviously, and the infrastructure, and yes. the infra so our infrastructure is so antiquated. So when you see like on the news with um, the floodings and the and the pipes bursting in Manhattan, mm -hmm. and I mean, it we're talking infrastructure that was implemented in the 1800s. Yes, that we are before still cars, in, before cars, <laughs> when we were you know Horses and when roads were actually created for horse buggies and mm -hmm. bicycles, more narrow, right? And, exactly. <laughs> So our infrastructure is so much older, mm -hmm. um, especially in the coastal areas like Boston or, mm -hmm. you know, where, you know, that's where they came. That's where the boats came. That's how we were discovered. You know, people probably saw Colorado and said, that place is scary. Look at all that snow. Look at those crazy mountains. I'm not going there. Yeah. But you, you pull up to a beach mm -hmm. from your boat and it's like welcoming, you know. So, yeah. you know, so we're. And you had just traveled for six mm -hmm. months on a boat. So it's like, right. I don't want to travel six more months. So <laughs> here it's like you have this opportunity to like mm -hmm. build this beautiful new infrastructure and then you create something like Fillmore. And I'm like, what is that? I get what you're Who saying. Yeah. That? <laughs> it's like you had the opportunity to do something really cool. For sure. And you didn't. There are some cities, I think, I don't know what, there's one, I, I think it's in Kansas actually. Mm -hmm. They built it about 10 years ago, specifically with the future in mind. Mm -hmm. And I, I love, I well, love those kind of ideas. The whole yeah. theory <laughs> is if you build it, they will come. Yeah. People are coming here already. Build it, damn it. Like, yeah. you know, build it already, <laughs> dude. Sure. The people are here. The line is going out the door. And we, you know, build it. You know, which is why I understand where people are like, no more people coming here. We're done. Close the border, you know, for God's for sake. For sure. So, but, my, like, the thing that was weird for me was you don't have transit. Like, I can't take the train to the mm. Denver airport. I can't take a train to Denver. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I it doesn't exist, and even and like there might be an Amtrak. I haven't looked into it. Have you looked into there's it? There's no okay. They there's no commuter train hmm. from Colorado Springs to Denver. Do you think there would be though? And you would think that at least from <laughs> Castle Rock to Denver, if yeah, you know. But yeah, you would think that they would have done that mm -hmm. because people do. I know people that commute back and forth to Denver. I know. And twenty four is such a pain because. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 25 is... 25, you know, yeah, 25. I said 25. Yeah, 24. 25 yeah. <laughs> is, is um, it, disturbing when you see the signs, how many fatalities. Oh, and wow. It, it's like, I look at those signs and go, that's like taking a death toll count. Like, mm -hmm. how many fatalities happened on It's a 25? reminder of all the innovations that need, need to take place. And, and that's all life. I think of yeah. is like, well, how do we lower that number? Mm -hmm. And... Is that all of 25, or is that just the stretch between Colorado Springs and Denver? I like, thought it was the, all of the the one I'm seeing. It's it's the whole state. I hope so, yeah, it's because the whole if state, it's yeah. not the whole state, <laughs> that's a really scary number, you yeah. know. Because um, I'm not sure, but yeah, that surprised me when I first moved here. I heard a train whistle, and I'm like, oh my god, they have a commuter train. I can like. It's probably you know, comforting hearing that train. <laughs> well, because when I heard a train whistle on Long Island, that was the commuter trains. Yeah, <laughs> here it's a two to three mile long train that God forbid you get stuck on yeah. that road. You're waiting forever, mm -hmm. you know? Um, yeah. So that shocked me. It is shocking because there are trains that go up when you're driving on 25, you do see, but it's like cargo. Trains. Those are all yeah. cargo trains. Mm -hmm. They're like what a mile, two miles long, whatever. Yeah. Um, they are long. <laughs> they are long, but what, what they do have is railroad tracks that go all the way through. Mm -hmm. So what is so difficult to throw a commuter train Build tracks next to that for commuter trains, and you know, kind maybe, of spread maybe it's the population. The politics. Out. Maybe it's the Colorado Springs isn't communicating with Denver enough. I don't know. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> yeah. So, no idea. so is there anything specific that you'd like to to promote today on this podcast? So, the thing that I would like to share right now, mm -hmm. um, within my industry, within the mortgage industry, is patience because there are delays. Mm -hmm. So, if you are refinancing. Um, and your loan officer is not communicating with you, and you're wondering what's taking so long, it's just there is a lot of backup right now mm -hmm. um, in the industry. People are like, well, hire more people, but you can't just hire people. They have to be trained. They have to be trained on all sorts of, you know, 
softwares and stuff. So it's not, mm. it's, it's easy to say. And training hot. actually doubles the time at first. Correct. So <laughs> they are implementing training and they are hiring more people, but they are not ready. Mm -hmm. Um, like you said, it's like it's t time it's slowing consuming. them down. Actually. It's slowing it down, <laughs> but soon it'll speed them up <laughs> for people that are purchasing properties. Um, you need to also be prepared for delays in the industry. So this is a, an area where people want to be closed before 30 days. And quite frankly, in all honesty, by the time a mortgage person gets that contract, we've already lost five days mm. because they go into contract the second they sign it, mm -hmm. that clock ticks, but we may not get brought into the situation until after the, the initial inspection or what have you. Mm -hmm. And so we're working on like sometimes 25 days instead of 30 days. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have delays in the industry and what I would, I, I'm calling for patience and understanding and that you mm -hmm. should set these expectations with your borrowers, with your sellers, that look, we will do the best that we can, but with all the overlays and all the additional guidelines and, and all of the influx of refinancing coming on, there are delays going on in the industry and you cannot sit there and say, well, we're going to go with the backup offer because that would be ridiculous. Mm -hmm. If you've already three weeks in and we're, and your mortgage person is asking for a two week extension, don't go back to them and say, well, I'm going with the backup offer because all you're doing extending is, is, more is more. extending it more and more because there's going to be delays no matter what. And don't lie to your borrowers. Don't lie to your real estate agents, mm -hmm. people in my industry. Don't sit there and say, no problem, we can close in three weeks. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, don't, because you're doing not only an injustice to yourself and to your realtor and to your, your customer, you're doing an injustice to all of us in the industry that know that these delays are, are happening mm -hmm. and that to make those promises is makes everyone look bad. It makes yeah. everybody look bad, makes everybody look angry. So mm -hmm. if you know, my wish on uh, my wish list would be a forty five day close instead of a thirty day close yes. here. <laughs> um but I'm from New York, so we have sixty day closes there. So oh, okay. right. So I'm watching uh, I watched my neighbor, um, they sold their house and she was crying one day on the front stoop and she's like, I just there's not enough time. I'm just gonna have to throw my stuff out because I don't know what to do with it. And I was like, why did you sign 30 days? Why didn't you ask your, your listing agent mm. for more time? So when you sign, you got to get out of that house in 30 mm -hmm. days. Yeah, you have to oh. be out of the house in 30 days. You have to be closed in 30 days. Oh, wow. S yeah, so that, you know, uh, you never want to see so you got to make sure you're ready. You have to, Yeah, <laughs> so as a seller, if you're going to sell your house before you list it, make sure that you have already gone through the house, mm -hmm. done some garage sales, is done your purging because- Have if, money saved for the, the, the B house is what one of my guests called it, is the house that people stay at when they get to their C house. Yeah. Uh, when they're selling. Make them. sure yeah. you don't list your house before you're ready because mm -hmm. once you list your house, you do need to be out of there in 30 days unless you talk and uh, ask for extensions because everything here is geared for 30 days. Mm -hmm. So we're talking patience, understanding, a little compassion and prepare people that there could be delays where you may need a couple extra weeks to get mm -hmm. things done. And if we can all play nice in the sandbox, it's all going to be fine. For sure. It's all going to be fine. You know, sweet. It's a trickle down effect. Yes. Yes. 100%. And we, we like, like we've all heard a thousand times. We're all in this together. <laughs> We're all in this together. Don't yeah. play. You know, I had a, a gentleman, I was doing, um, LO support. I, I, I help loan offers get onboarded and, you know, work around different difficulties when you start at a new company. And I had this gentleman come in yesterday morning. He was on the East coast. Um, you know, I had just logged on seven o'clock Colorado time. I didn't even have my first cup of coffee and he comes in and, uh, you know, thank God I'm from the East Coast. So, I mean, <laughs> you know, the language wasn't particularly kind. Um, okay. And, you know, he was all over the spectrum, yelling, screaming, nobody, you know, I'm three days past my closing date. Mm. I had to be, and I'm like sitting there going, I know exactly what happened. This loan officer did not prepare the realtor or his borrower mm -hmm. for delays. And now he was ghosting them. He was actually, he put his head in the sand, mm. didn't want to deal with it because everybody was screaming at him. 
when all he really needed to do was prepare the realtor that there could be delays. Mm -hmm. Prepare your borrower. There can be delays in the industry. And when we talked, he's like, if I did that, I would have lost the deal to another mortgage broker who said they could get it closed in three weeks. And that's not that's not how you're supposed to do business. And <laughs> so I'm like sitting there going, as much as I understand the competition that's out there, mm-hmm. um, that mortgage broker probably would never get another referral from that realtor because he lied to her, yeah. told her he could get something closed in three weeks, and he's going to now have he has a, to repair a reputation. And he's going to have a two week <laughs> delay that you had warned people about. So be be confident in the fact that know your business, know what you're doing, prepare everybody for delays. Mm-hmm. And if you lose a deal because somebody's saying they can close it in three weeks, you know what? That real estate agent or that borrower is probably going to come back to you and say, you were right. And I appreciate the fact that yeah. you did not lie to us. Like Joe Schmo over here. That's how you build long term. Right. Right. That's how you stay in it 30, right. 30, however many so, years you've been. <laughs> I say be honest. I say be honest about the time. Be upfront about it. Mm-hmm. Educate. Educate people about what's happening in your industry so that they don't call up screaming and yelling because somebody didn't prepare them. Mm-hmm. That would be like my biggest thing. If You can take that away. If you're a loan officer in this industry, be honest. Mm-hmm. Prepare them. Educate them. If you're a real estate agent in the industry, understand the delays are not about your borrower, your customer. It's about the industry. Mm-hmm. And if you can work a little bit more with the mortgage broker and understanding that delays may happen, do that. As a realtor, my wish would be that you do 45-day contracts. Yes. Because then you're giving ample time to your mm-hmm. seller to prepare, to pack properly, ample time to the borrower for any delays that may come in with appraisals or title or homeowner, whatever the delays may be, or just in the industry itself, Mm -hmm. you know, until we get out of this. For sure. You know, 30 days isn't impossible, but it's no longer. With COVID, it's like. It's not a guarantee. Or made it very hard. Right. Don't call me up and say, how quickly can you do this deal? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, no matter how. You're going to tell them exactly. I'm going to tell you. (laughs) prepare do your 30-day contract and please prepare everybody for delays mm-hmm. sweet yeah well i've enjoyed this conversation thank a you lot. me too <laughs> me too awesome so i guess we'll wrap it up and uh this has been the colorado springs business podcast and we'll see you guys on the next episode <laughs> thank you yeah.